Today we're going to take a look at Easy Draw Board View software. I want to say thanks to Union Repair for providing me with a demonstration copy. I'll put links down in the video description if you'd like to purchase a license for this. I think you'll like what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. Now first things first, you do not need a dongle for this software, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about carrying around a little flash drive with you. When you log in, you will, however, be notified if you have any antivirus protection that there is something on here that it doesn't recognize. So this is fairly standard when we're dealing with this kind of stuff. It'll usually be connecting to some remote server and I don't know what's built in here exactly, but if you're worried about that, obviously, you're probably not going to be using anything like this. Now the other thing is, as I mentioned earlier, you don't need a dongle and you can install this on up to three different computers which is great if you go beyond that you're going to cause some conflicts and they'll probably freeze your account or something like that but i've only got two computers i'm really using right now so it's very convenient to not have to go and move a dongle from here to there forget about it or lose it or anything like that so i've got this installed on multiple multiple machines and as you can imagine, I want to start with the basics here because this stuff does so much that I can make this video probably an hour long, but I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as possible. So let's take a look over here under iPhone because that seems to be a lot of people's favorites. And if we look on the side there, we have drop downs for all different sorts of phones. And of course, under here, if you want to look at iPads, you're going to find that a lot of this information is duplicated in other types of software but it definitely does some things that they don't. So let's start with the iPhone 7 here. I'm gonna click on this first option here. This is for the 0188-08 version. And that is going to show you all at once everything on the board, both sides simultaneously. So if I go over here and I wanna see where this connects and I highlight it, it's gonna show me up here at the top the different components that are on this line. And then of course, what the name of it is down here on the bottom, it says Buck 5 LXO. And if we click on the other side, of course, we can see that goes to PP0V9 underscore SOC underscore fixed. And you we use this as you would imagine, just like any other type of board, board view software, you can highlight ground, you can figure out what goes where. You can use your scroll wheel to zoom in, which is nice. You can drag it on the screen with your cursor, and then you can get a close look at where uh, everything is numbered here as you go through. So pretty standard for the most part. You know, you don't have to hit the tab button like you would on the other software that I'm using. You just kind of move this over here. And of course, if you want to zoom out, you can see what's going on all at once. So that's just the basics for it. Now, if we go down to the location drawing option right over here, we're going to have a slightly different image and you'll see that these have to download individually so they don't store locally on your disk you must be connected to the internet in order to access the information and then it will download some sort of encrypted file that this board view will uh, interpret and show you where everything's at so here is just kind of a diagram that shows you different locations of components on that same motherboard and then if we go down here this is one of my favorite parts you click the third option in this section, I'm sorry, the fourth option where it says schematic diagram, and these all default to English. As far as I can tell, it's been English from the time I got it, so I didn't have to go and translate anything here and try to figure it out. And we've got the actual schematic here inside of the software well downloaded, like I mentioned before. And if you just go down, uh, if you use your scroll wheel, here's the thing, it's gonna zoom out and zoom in. So you do have to grab the screen and drag it, or you can use your arrow keys, or if you go up here in the top left corner, you'll see there's a next page and a previous page, and we can go all the way through to page 81. So these are the schematics for the phone. I don't wanna to go too far into this stuff. I don't want uh, anyone getting upset about me sharing this. You know, obviously, if you want this information, you can purchase the software. But again, having the, di the diagram, the schematic, built in already so we don't have to go hunting this down is kind of nice and here's something else that's cool they have something called double open graph so as you can see i'm looking at the iphone 7 schematic if i go to double open graph i can go and open a secondary window here we're going to go to iphone 7 bitmap i think this is the one that we want and give this a second to download and install and what's going to happen here is you'll see the board layout and momentarily you will see a second window that opens up side by side and shows the schematic so if i go down to the board view and i click on this component well let's try this side it doesn't matter i click on the component here it's going to automatically open the schematic to that same page so we can take a look 
at what C3202 is connected to here on the schematic. So this I think is invaluable. I've tried using a few other uh, board view softwares and for some reason I'm always having a hard time getting the schematic. I usually have to open that up myself, but the fact that these two are linked together is great. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and let's see what we wanna take a look at next. You can see they've got the two different versions. We've got the 249A and the 229A, so they do have both of those. And what you'll usually run into is that one of them will have everything labeled, so you can see exactly where everything is and what it is. And then on the less popular model, they might be slightly different. So this one actually does show you what they are. And if we click on it, it does say where these are going to. That's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you open up the Intel version and you don't get all of that information, but you can kind of cross-reference and look at the other one to double check. Now, what's interesting here is they go a little beyond this. They do show things like common faults, which, which I thought was interesting. If we click under the iPhone 7 Plus, which is what we're looking at now, and we go to iPhone 7 Plus sleep, death, restart, failure, common problem. Apparently, this is something that happens a lot and they'll give you some ideas as to where you might start looking to figure out what's causing the problem or maybe some areas where other people have seen this happen before. So that is helpful. We have another one down here that says common problem, boot stuck without baseband, uh, brush machine error 56 and so forth. So this is kind of cool that they compile this information together and give you an idea, you know, if you're not quite familiar or if you just don't have the time on your hands to do all this research, hey, here's something else that someone else figured out or something that someone figured out and you can go and start taking a look and see if you don't have a similar problem. Down here we have another one called maintenance case. So we have common IC short connection method and let's take a look at that and see what it says or what it looks like. And we have a couple things pointed out on here, presumably something that you can use. I'm gonna guess this might be a bypass for Q2101. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of information other than that but it looks like this is probably where you can short these pins in order to bypass this component if you're trying to track down a uh, source of heat and you don't want it to be going through these things, which are you know kind of misleading because you think you've got a short here, but you don't. You're just pushing power through there. So I'm pretty sure that that's what this is designed for. I haven't had to use all of the features on here, but again, it's just got an overwhelming number of uh, an increasingly complex list of stuff. It seems like every time I open this up, I find something new. So let's see, installation, earpiece, cable, restart does not enter the system. So you've got all sorts of suggestions here, weak Wi-Fi and so forth. Uh, but let's go ahead and close that up. I think you get the idea. The main thing being the board view and the schematic and also having them tied together. Now what I also like here is if we open this up, let's go, go back to this uh, board view here for the iPhone 7 and they have some third party software tools that are built in. So if I go up here to the top, and also you can, these are shortcuts. So if you use your Alt button, just hold down Alt and press P and that'll open the drop down. And if I want screen paint, I'm gonna continue holding down the Alt, Alt button and press one, and that will open up my screen paint tool. So you can go over here and you can select your brush. You can select different colors and so forth, what size you want your mouse to be. And you can actually go in here and draw whatever you want to on your board view or schematic or anywhere else within the software. And as soon as we close this, that's going to go away. So if you wanna take a note or something, you can do that, take a screenshot. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the mouse drawing tool and this one I think is very cool. So right now we're going to select a standard uh, symbol here. We'll just do the paintbrush or whatever this is. Oh, I actually think I got a shape there, didn't I? Did I get a shape? I think I did. Oh, uh, let's see, Mike. Okay, so here we can draw an arrow. We can put a red X. Let's say we've eliminated something, you know, as an option we can go over here and we can draw a complete solid block if we want to. I'm sorry, that's not a solid block. We can <laughs> do a hollow block, but we can also draw a solid, if I can remember how I did it. I mean, there's just so much stuff on here. You can go in here and you can draw blocks, you can change the colors. So as you can imagine, there's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do here to just kind of add to this yourself. You can map things out. And again, as soon as you close the tool, all that stuff is gonna disappear. So you, if you wanna keep your notes on the screen, you wanna definitely leave that open. 
Now let's go up here to the top. We have a fault graph with recent updates. We want to see what the recent updates are. For this one, we've got the iPhone XS Max location drawing. So if we take a quick look at this, if you don't already know where this stuff is, here is the location of all the components on the iPhone uh, XS Max. And then I want to say we've also got, uh, we've got the schematic drawings, which is great already. I mean, for this to be out so soon is encouraging. We have a motherboard labeling and fault repair coloring. So let's take a look at this. And there's a familiar name. This is from G-Lon, apparently. And it's got the iPhone XS Max IC distribution map. So they've gone in here and named and, you know, kind of mapped out where everything is on the board, which is great. If you don't have this stuff memorized, you can take a look inside here and get an idea of, you know, what it is that you're looking at, obviously. And we've got one other thing here. I'm going to try to pull this up. Where are we? I think it's on... Oh, this is really cool too. So we've got an iPhone series plate layer diagram. And here's what that means. If you've ever looked at a PCB from the edge, you know that there are several different layers underneath what is visible from the outside. So if you're looking at the first layer, it's kind of like this, what you see on the screen right now. This is what is in front of you. But if you want to know what's underneath that, we're going to go, let's go to the second layer here and select that. And this will show us if we go down into the second layer of the PCB, how these circuits are laid out and what connects to what at this depth. Okay, so the second layer, as you can see, zoom in a bit here. This is what it's going to look like if you peel off all of that outer coating. So you can see where the circuitry runs underneath, where your uh, screw holes are, where they get damaged when people put the wrong size screw in there, and of course where you would have to bridge or create a new connection if something got damaged. If we drill down a little further here, let's go into, let's see, that was the second layer. So let's take a look at the third layer. So just beneath this, if you continue to dig down into your motherboard, this is what you're going to end up seeing. All right, so we'll zoom in again. And there you can see we have another layer of circuitry and so forth. So you get the idea. This is really cool. If you end up with the board that has some damage on the surface, something's been torn off, and you want to figure out, hey, where can I tap into this line? We can get an idea of where all this stuff runs. If you don't have something on the surface, it's going to help you out. I want to say that is a lot of it. Let me go down my list here and make sure I haven't missed anything. So it is $64 per year for the license on this, which is certainly uh, more than reasonable. I mean, you should make this back on your first repair. We've got different brand names in here. I'm going to take a look right now at the Huawei Enjoy 5S schematic drawing, and this is what they have uh, currently available for this one. So as you know, none, none of these uh, board views are going to be completely 100% everything because a lot of this stuff is just not released or not available. This has a somewhat different appearance than the other stuff we were looking at before. And there was another diagnostic tool I'm going to pull up here in just a second. Here's something that I know you're going to love. And this has been very helpful. And I believe, I may be wrong, but I think that this is the only board view that has this available. And that is the resistance drawing. So if we go to the iPhone 7, I'm going to go to resistance drawing down here. And we will open up the Qualcomm version by clicking on this option. And if you need to do some diagnosis under a chip, zoom in here. Let's take a look up here at the top and you can see they've already mapped out what resistances you should be finding once you pull the chip off and you test it in diode mode. You can see where the non-connected pads are and you can see where ground goes. So I have found this saves me a lot of time here you can see we have all the resistance values under the Wi-Fi chip if we scroll down here you can see under this one and so forth so it's not going to be every single thing on the board but there's the NAND and uh, you know a lot of stuff that's important that we're going to be working on you'll be able to see what those resistance values are without having to go through and have uh, you know a working board to map from and then of course we do have the resistance values on the connectors just like we do in most board view softwares so this is going to be very, very helpful we've got a key here it's you know straightforward as far as what this does how to use it and compare your measurements so this i find invaluable 
we also have something called a power supply test. So let me open this up real quick. So if we go over here to where it says power supply test drawing, I'm going to click this drop down and we're going to open up baseband power supply 14 way voltage re resistance test drawing. Oh, that's hard to say. There you go. So this is for the iPhone 7 baseband power supply. And if you just zoom in here, you can see different areas on the board where you can test for these values. So if you want to find PP underscore 1V7 underscore LDO, you go to C5607. Resistance value is 485. Voltage is going to be 1.803. And if you just follow this red arrow all the way over here down to the side, it shows you right here where this little yellow dot is where you're going to put your probe in order to test for that. So this is just kind of a shortcut so you don't really have to go into the schematic or into the board view and kind of track down where everything's at. They've already listed on some of these models. Now this isn't going to be all of them, but on some of these more common models that we work with, they're going to show you exactly where you need to go, what type of resistance and voltage you should find there. Very helpful that they're compiling this information. I'm not sure if there's a way that you're able to contribute to kind of um, you know add to this database, but they do have something up here that says, where was it? I swear I saw something here that said something about being able to, oh, what's hardware detection? I don't know what this means. They've got something called hardware detection, but I don't think that I've got any hardware uh, that's going to be relevant to that. I could have sworn there was some, here we go. So we've got upload PDF drawings. So I'm not sure exactly how this work. I imag works. I imagine if you have something that's missing from here, maybe they will allow you, let's see, whether to upload a single drawing, select yes for a single file, select no for the whole directory. So you can upload something. I would imagine this is to add to the database that EasyDraw already has on hand. So that I think is a good thing as well. Oh, there is one other thing I forgot to mention. You do have seven days from the day of purchase. In case you decide you don't need Easy Draw, you can get a refund, uh, turn your license back in. But I gotta say, I am sold on this. I love it. I will absolutely be renewing my license next year. And as far as I'm concerned, this is something that every serious technician should have in their diagnostic toolbox. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one and thanks for watching.